Well, I got this guy padded down a little bit in the in the vise. Tighten it up, make sure it doesn't go anywhere. And I'm going to put a split ring in it, one inch split ring. Uh, I matched up the base of the width of this with the base of the drill, and it turned out to be. Seven sixty fourths. So you'd have to divide that to get your decimal or whatever. All right, now there's a little pin here. I don't know if you can see that. There's a pin there. And uh, I don't want to go too far in. I don't want to go too far out. I don't want to hit the pin. I'm going to have to take this out of the padded stuff and just go straight jaws just not worry about marring it because it moves around too much let me get back up in here you're all zoomed in aren't you well good for you all right that's it right there right about there i'll do it that should do it Zoom in, zoom back. All right, <clears throat> I've got a variable speed drill, so I'm gonna go slow. And it's got these dimples in it already, so I'm kind of like gonna use a pre-existing dimple. I'm gonna go on this edge. I'm gonna put it on an edge because there's a dimple here, and I I don't have much room by the pin. Uh-oh, see that? I need to tighten this baby down. Let me hold this still. Alright, let's get back here. Where were we? Where were we? I think we were right there. Uh-oh. Got some, got some run out here. Well, don't go that way. We don't want you to go that way. We want you over here. Or drill too far. Yeah, that looks good. That looks good. See, I was going to measure the center and put it exactly the center and all that. And then uh, it turns out that it's better off not being centered. Uh, uh, running out of left hand strength. That's right. All right. I'm not moving. All right. Let's get back to where we were. It's going to take forever. We're in no big rush, though. I'd rather do it right and slow than fast and wrong. Ooh, blood. Look, we've hit liner. <laughs> now we hit steel. This is the hard part. I may have to do it like the other one and just make it like a little half clevis thing. I don't know. We'll see how we'll see how well I get with drilling. Wipe the blood off my tip here. All right. Are you seeing anything? Am I getting in the way? Probably. Probably getting in the way. I'm trying not to. Well, you can tell the difference between steel and bone. Man. Alright, what I've decided to do, rather than drill through both sides, is just drill... 
over here and try to match that one up a little bit. And we need to tighten the crap out of this. All those locks rattling in the back now. All right. Let's see how far we go here. Let's see. About there. Walk off, come on. Now we want you in that dimple. No. Yeah, it'll work. That's close enough. Keep drilling until you see blood. Oh, there we go. You've gone far enough. Yeah, I could probably drill through steel, but it'd be better off having like a drill press or something like that. More accuracy and bone is easier to do. All I need is something to grip it. This will make it like a little, a little clevis. You know, you hook something over here, and you hook something over here, and you got a little bale or clevis. And I can make it out of this. I just got to cut out a section. I got a bunch of these, like a hundred of them I just ordered. Um, so I'll cut out a section of this and slip it through there. So. Cut out a section right there. See what I'm getting at? Something kind of like this. Focus over here, you crazy camera. You know, it goes in, and the other side connects, and you just got a little spring tension. So, the amount that I cut out of this is critical. I don't want to cut too much out. I don't think it's going to work. It might work this way if I just leave this split right here over here. Dang it. Thought I had an idea. Anyway. I used a cutoff wheel on a Dremel to cut the... Hey, you sit down there and turn off. To cut that section out right there. And all you need is a small little opening like that. Let me pull this guy back. And so, even though it doesn't go all the way through, I could put one side over here, one side over there, and the friction holds it. And now you got a little, a little bale. It's not going to come off. I think this other half would be too big. Yeah, you wouldn't, you'd have to bend this. If you wanted it to be super salvageable and everything, you could just bend this with a pair of pliers and make that gap smaller. But as long as you've just got a little gap there, and you've got enough thickness here, instant bail. And you can do that on just about anything that doesn't have a... Because, man, I tried... It doesn't have a hole or a lanyard hole. Because I tried with that drill... And it was going to take a while. It was going to take a while to go through that. You may scoff at 440A, but uh, it's it's fairly tough steel. I mean, compared to, like, bone and stuff, naturally. Anyway, there you go. I hope you found that useful. How to attach a bale to your little nail nick tool. So you can carry it around as a little pry bar. That's what I use this thing more for than a nail nick. Although... Thanks to Gizmo, he showed me a video from Tony Bowes himself of how to use a nail nick tool. And once you know how to use it, you basically, you know, put your thumb on one side and, the, and lift it up. It's pretty simple once you know how to do it, but if you're an idiot like me, 
Like you said, if you don't know how to do it, you're going to hurt yourself every time. But anyways, there you go. There's a little uh, quickie for you how to attach a, uh, a bale to your nail. A bale to your nail. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.